Hello, this is going to be tutorial 2 for Nebulous Space Command. And uh, since the last one, I've gone through the uh, movement tutorial a couple more times to get a bit of a better handle on how to move around. And hopefully we'll be a bit better at that. Uh, I also noticed a couple things that I had overlooked, most notably that it's possible to rotate with the mouse while you're inputting movement orders. Which makes sense, but something that uh, I don't think was mentioned, and thus I missed it. In any case, time to get started on weapons employment. Looks like we still have just two frigates. We'll just get started from here. I have also adjusted my audio levels a little bit, so hopefully they're a bit better this time. Now comes my favorite part. Weapons, and how to use them. Time to shoot things. Don't worry about that red contract over in the distance. It's a decommissioned frigate that's been tugged out here for target practice. All right, I see it right there. Before we get to weapons, we need to Action. learn about the tactical view. You can switch between tactical and normal views by pressing spacebar. What I was going to say is that I like that you have to uh, prove that you can rotate your view to see where the target is. And, okay. And you can zoom way out. All right. Uh, one thing that I remember, this actually looks sort of familiar, it reminds me of Homeworld a little bit. Uh, one thing that I remember is that in Homeworld, a lot of time you would spend a lot of time in this view. The view controls here are the same as before, but you can zoom out much further and get a better idea of the situation in the battle space. Take a moment to look around now. Yeah. Okay. Rock, rock. The tactical view provides you with a lot of information that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. It's your primary way of knowing what's happening around you. You'll be using it a lot. The range plane shows you both elevation of targets and their distance from a given point. When no ships are selected, it sits at the center of the battle space. Range plane. Okay. Ah, okay, I see. So like here, if I select a ship. Yeah then uh, I'm guessing this is uh, kilometers, probably. Yeah, it's probably kilometers. So one kilometer, two kilometer, three kilometers. Uh, this is above the plane for me. So with triangulation, that's about five or six kilometers. Yeah, all right. Select the small beginnings now to see how the plane changes. Yeah. Ready. All right. Receiving. Take note that the range plane moved to center on that ship. It'll also track with it. All ranges will be indicated relative to your currently selected ship. All right. Notice how the line from the enemy track to the range plane has a slight curve. This is because elevation and range are not directly related, so the contact's distance on the plane must be projected onto the sphere. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense as well. Okay. This layout makes it easy to determine the range of a target by looking at the position of the plane relative to your selected ship's capabilities. All right. The dotted lines represent maximum ranges of your ship's systems. Red indicates offensive range, blue is sensor range, and defensive systems are green. I don't see gray. And I'm guessing that might be that I don't have defensive systems. So uh, weapons go out to here, uh, sensors and such go out to there, yeah. While there are common ship configurations found throughout the fleet, most ships have some unique capability. The ANS Small Beginnings is configured with two Mark 62 twin barrel 120mm cannons and a 16 cell vertical missile launcher. Okay. I'm guessing that that's the ver vertical missile launcher, too. And these are the cannons. We also have a radar. I'm unlocking your weapon systems now, so let's put gunnery to the test with some tried and true naval fire. There are several ways to target weapons. The fastest and simplest is by shooting directly at the sensor track. To do this, right-click the red sensor track to bring up the action menu in track mode. Okay. The action menu will indicate it is in track mode by displaying the targets and track number in the space. All right. It will automatically open the weapons list if there are any weapons on the ship. Okay. The active targeting mode is shown at the top of the list. Right now we are in track mode indicated by TRK. We'll talk about other modes later. Okay. Select the cannons from the weapon list and light up the target. We'll get it done. 
Definitely seeing some hits there. Looking good. I'm guessing that this is a stationary target. Yeah. If okay. the guns can't hit a target, the ship will automatically roll itself to get currently active weapon on angle yeah, on the target. Saw a hit there. This is called unmasking. All right. Right now, you'll notice that our fire is pretty inaccurate. This is because our targeting solution isn't using a fire control lock. The red dot jumping around near the track shows where our sensors think the target is. All right. Okay, I see. And I'm guessing the Let's improve our average. targeting accuracy by locking the target with our bullseye fire control radar, located on the top of the ship. All right. To do this, right click the track and select the LCK or lock at the top of the action menu. You can also use the X key keyboard shortcut. Ah, okay, there we go. Let's, uh... Alright. Notice the new icon on the target. This indicates that the target is locked on and is providing much better accuracy and increased update rate on the target. So we're focusing our sensors on this particular target. Remember, all right. not all ships have fire control radar, and you'll only be able to get a lock with ships that have them equipped. All right. Right now we are shooting armor piercing, AP, shells at the target. Armor piercing is effective on armor plating, but will only deal damage to internal components directly in the shell's path once it punctures the hull. While Sense. any damage is a good thing, we can deal even more damage by switching the shell type to high explosive, dealing damage to a wide area in the target's internals. Yes, but I'm guessing that that has reduced uh, armor penetration. We use high explosive, HE shells, against targets of appropriate size or smaller, or larger targets with heavy armor damage. HE shells cause much less damage to armor, but penetration will explode inside and do damage to all nearby components and personnel. Okay. Yeah. To switch to HE shells, first open the action menu in track mode by right-clicking the track. Yes. In the weapons list, next to the cannons entry, click on the ammunition ah, icon to open the ammunition yeah, so list. This is an ammunition list. Click the 120mm HE shell option to select it. The ammo switch is now pending and will only be executed if a new fire order is given. To begin firing the new ammo type, click the weapon group to confirm the ammunition change. Yeah, we've got them now. Now we'll select the small beginnings and watch what it's up to. Cycling. Cycling. The mounts display shows the ship's cannons are firing and cycling. When the yes. yellow bar is filled, the cannon will fire again. We can also see that the fire control's radar is solid green, indicating it's active and it has an active lock-on. Yes, okay. Here's the active orders list, showing an icon for each order the ship is currently executing. Right now, we have an order to fire our guns and an order to lock the target. Okay. Have the small beginnings hold fire and break their lock-on by right-clicking on the order icons to cancel them. Alright, that's a right click. Yes. And they clear slowly. Okay, there's a little bit of time before that. And that's the basics of gunnery. The key thing is to know what ammunition to use, especially as your target takes more damage to warrant the big stuff. But what if you don't have a sensor track? That's a good question. What if I don't have a sensor track? Take a look at your ship's hulls, and you'll notice the four white octagons on the sides. These are radar panels, and provide coverage for their respective sector of space. There's also a central control module inside the ship which tracks what these panels see. So these are what she's talking about there, is these panels here, I'm guessing. And there's a second one over here. Yeah. All right. When panels are damaged or destroyed, you'll lose coverage in that area. Similarly, if the radar controller is destroyed, you'll lose all coverage in all directions. Obviously, right. fighting blind is not a good thing. But that won't put you out of the fight just yet. Direct fire weapons like cannons can fall back on visual targeting, where the crew will provide targeting data to your guns using onboard optics. Some weapons like missiles can't do this, however. Okay, so some weapons, probably mostly ballistics, can fire at targets that you're close enough to see. And I'm 
suspecting that you can probably also fire at targets that uh, you can communicate with everyone else to find out where the target is. I've ordered your crew to disable the radar. Take a moment and observe what happens. You don't want the first time you're operating without radar to be the real deal. Okay. With sensors disabled, you will now see visual contacts when you have one of your ships selected, and nothing when no ship is selected. Visual contacts are only useful to the ship that actually sees the target, unlike the sensor track, which was shared across all ships. If you don't see anything, you'll need to move within visual range, about 3200 meters. I've created a marker in the general area for your reference. That won't happen in actual battle. Okay, we're gonna come to... Oh, okay, that's neat. Let's come to about there. And for this one, we'll come to... Well... About there. Actually, I should probably be staying closer to cover, but I don't think they can shoot back at me yet. You can fire on visual contacts the same way you did with the sensor tracks. Use visual targeting to fire at the target ship with the small beginnings guns again. Oh, I'm not supposed to be moving. Who am I? Breaking burn. You can stop. Let's see how close I can get. I'm guessing that it's probably also somewhat dependent. Yeah, there it is, right there. It's a weapon. Solution fire. locked in. And that's a different uh, icon as well, I just noticed. In a yeah, situation uh, like this, you can imagine things are not going too well for you. But you'll at least still be a threat. So don't feel too cut up if your sensors go dark. I... Okay, yeah. Now missiles. All right. The ships in this fleet carry two variants of the SGM-2 series anti-ship cruise missiles, the Thunderhead and the Hurricane. All right, so missiles. The Hurricane is a command-guided missile, which means it is guided to the target by a launching ship. If it misses the target, it will come back around and try again until it runs out of fuel, is shot down, or finally hits the target. Two has thunderheads and hurricanes, Ready. one only has hurricanes. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, command guided missiles sound like that so long as the missile is, or the uh, command ship is able to see the target, it'll be able to guide the missile in. Command missiles are very difficult to avoid. The only way to defeat them without destroying the missile itself is by destroying the launching ship or jamming its sensors or communication. All right, yes. Shoot the archer, as we say. Yes. The downside okay. is that the hurricane must be shot at a sensor track. If you lose a track, the hurricane will be useless. Yeah, all right. Makes sense. Let's launch three hurricane missiles at the target. Start by opening the action menu in track mode on the target. Okay. Now select the SGM-225 Hurricane with the weapons list. This will queue up a single missile shot at the target and leave you with an active track selection widget. Ready. Multiple missiles can be fired with a single order using the left alt key. Hold the left alt key and click on the target to add one more missile per click. The number of queued missiles is shown next to your mouse cursor. To issue the order, you can either click the left mouse button with the left alt key released, or you can press the enter key. Once you've issued a launch order, you'll notice the mount status display will show the number of missiles that are being right. spun up for a launch. Actually, I kind of want to see this, I think. Alright. It takes time between when the target is selected and when the missile actually leaves the ship. This warm-up time is when the weapons control system brings the missile online, checks it for errors, establishes a reference frame for the IMU, uploads the target package, and more. Okay. Programming time varies by missile type, with more complicated missiles taking more time. Alright, so uh, I presume that that means more capable missiles will take longer to program. The number of missiles that can be warmed up and programmed at the same time is referred to the ship's maximum salvo size, and it varies from ship to ship based on its configuration. These two frigates each have four channels, so four missiles can be fired at a time. Locked in. 
All right. Missiles are one of your most limited and precious resources, second only to the ships themselves. They are extremely powerful, but extremely scarce. You'll need to know when to use them, as it can't be replenished under normal circumstances outside of a port. All right. A frigate like the Reigns will be crippled by only two or three missile hits, but in a real fight, it will often take more than that to penetrate an enemy's point defense, which are a serious threat to hurricanes as they tend to fly in a direct path. All right, so hurricanes don't miss, but they're easy to intercept. The ANS Dusty Tome is carrying a different missile loadout. Ready. Select the ship now so we can take a look at it. All right. Got it. I already did this frigate that, is actually. carrying Thunderheads, an active radar-guided missile, which means it carries its own method for finding targets, allowing it to seek targets by itself. Receiving. Want to block. Locking on the target. It can be targeted in the same way as the Hurricane missiles, but once it has left the tube, it's entirely autonomous. When it reaches the end of its path, it will activate its onboard seeker and begin searching for a target. All right. The greatest benefit of active missiles is that they can be sent on complex waypoint paths, allowing for multi-angle strikes and even hitting targets behind asteroids. But we'll cover that when you get to your advanced missile trials. Yeah, I don't think I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> for now, let's just fire three Thunderhead missiles at the target, as we did before with the Hurricanes. Thunderheads. I have one, two, three. Right, it's online. All right. As easy as it is to use active radar missiles, there are some downsides to their operation. I'm guessing that they can be decoyed by chaff? The first is that the missile must find a target within the cone of its seeker in order to track and kill it. This makes evasive maneuvers okay, such as course changes an easy way there. to defeat active missiles fired at long range, especially against fast moving targets. Alright. The second shortcoming is that active seekers are easy to decoy with chaff and other countermeasures, yeah, meaning more missiles need to be used in order to score a hit as active missile radars are particularly sensitive to jamming and decoys. All right. Orders. But that should do it for your weapons trial. I'll have fleet logistics retrieve the dummy ship, and I recommend looking into all the weapons when you get your chance. I'll see you at the academy. All right. Sounds like that's it. Uh, I found that one a lot more straightforward than the last one. Um, especially appreciate the uh, explanation of the uh, different types of weapons. And uh, hopefully things uh, continue to go this way. I'm really enjoying the way the UI works right now. Um, obviously, I'm getting a little bit better at not hitting the QK. So, like I said, it was a minor thing. And realizing that I could uh, rotate with the mouse has helped a lot with that. Uh, anyway... Thank you for your time, and hopefully continues to go well. See you next time.